Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. A new CSIR analysis shows that the risk of load shedding has not abated, despite low demand as a result of the COVID-19 lockdown. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the report and the outlook for load shedding. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What does this new analysis show and what is the prognosis for load shedding in the future? Well, quite amazingly, it shows that we've had more load shedding in 2020 than we did in 2019, which was our worst ever year of load shedding in South Africa. You remember we descended to stage six load shedding in December last year, and uh, there was a view that maybe we would start to recover in the sense that Eskim had a plan for maintenance, as well as the, the fact that there was lower demand as a, as a result of COVID-19. In fact, demand fell precipitously during the hard lockdown period and Eskom used that period for, to do some opportunistic maintenance. But Eskom has since entered into their scheduled maintenance, the philosophy maintenance as they called it, to try and get reliability of the fleet back up. So there is more capacity out and the breakdown continue. And therefore we've had 1,383 gigawatt hours of cuts that's before the cuts that we're going to experience this week. And uh, last year, we had 1,352 gigawatt hours. So you can see we've already surpassed the most intense year of load shedding 2019. And the outlook uh, for the next few years, two to three years in particular, is, is not good. Uh, the capacity gap is up to 8,000 megawatts in certain years if we do nothing. Um, and the energy gap is dire at up to 4,500 gigawatt hours in certain years. Now, if you think we've had load shedding of 1,383 already this year, if we have to have 4,500 gigawatt hours, the cost to the economy is going to be massive. In fact, we work on a, well, the CSR works on a, 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 a cost of unserved energy of about 87 rand 50 per kilowatt hour. So the cost to the economy is gonna range between 60 billion rand 120 billion rand a year if we get if we continue with these sort of levels of load shedding. How does this gel with what ESCOM is saying about the state of the system? Yeah, ESCOM is also warning that the system remains vulnerable. As we know, they've entered this reliability maintenance phase, which means they're going to be sticking to their maintenance plan, which means more plant is going to be out for maintenance for longer periods, which is a good thing in the long term because the ESCOM's energy availability factor has fallen dramatically. Uh, it's averaging around 66% this year, year to date, which is even below last year's level of 66.9 and well below the target in the integrated resource plan of 75.5% EAF. So they need to recover that EAF and the only way to do that <coughs> is through proper maintenance. But that means there will be more plants out for longer periods Therefore, any breakdowns during those periods is going to raise the risk of load shedding, uh, uh, as we are seeing at the moment. And uh, even with that maintenance, I think Eskim is going to find it difficult to recover its EAF to the sort of levels that the RP is assuming. So there's going to be a gap uh, that, that will continue to prevail for some time. And Eskim is therefore warning for, uh, of at least 18 months of a risk of load shedding, but possibly longer. What can be done to avoid the worst case scenario? Well, I think firstly, we need some frank uh, honesty about what the prognosis is. We obviously have to wait for Eskom summer plan, which I think is not going to look very pretty. We know that we usually get much more load shedding in summer than we do in winter, when more plant is in operation and less is out for maintenance. So that's the first step, admit the problem. And then I think, <laughs> You know, and unfortunately, we actually know what we have to do. The problem is that we're just not doing it. So we know that we have to liberalize the self-generation market, allow corporates, allow households, allow municipalities to procure their own energy and do that urgently. And still the regulatory hurdles remain and it's very difficult. We need to incentivize demand side response. Now that's difficult because Eskom's got um, financial challenges, but there are ways uh, suppose, especially, I suppose, the tariff is the big signal. So there will be investment in energy efficiency. So that's on the customer response. But then we also know that we have to, we've got this emergency gap 
that was identified all the way back in October last year of 2,000 megawatts. We know it's bigger than that because Eskom's already said it's 5,000 megawatts. The CSIR report shows it's between 5,000 and 8,000 megawatts on a capacity front, even more on an energy on the energy front. So we need to start procuring that emergency power. And the best case would be to, uh, if we could procure that sort of new capacity in line with the integrated resource plan, but we may have to make some expensive choices in the interim, given the cost of unserved energy being so high. If it can come in well below that, it's, it's worth adding some of that capacity because we can't continue going to load shedding an economy that already, was already struggling in a, and in a recession even before COVID. We can't have this constraint overhanging us. So that procurement has to start. And the fact that that the bid documentation is not yet out is, is amazing and outrageous. I think it will be released any day now, but it is just a startling in a crisis that we haven't released that emergency procurement program. Then we obviously have to implement the integrated resource plan. The plan is already probably out of date. It probably, already probably well, overestimates demand, but it, it underestimates the poor performance of the Eskom fleet in terms of the EAF. And uh, it also assumed, I think, that there would be more capacity on from Kosile and Madupi than there is. So the gap is bigger than what the IRP probably uh, assumes. So without having to update the RP, I think we can at least start uh, implementing the RP and getting the utility scale programs going. But the only quick wins are really on that customer response. So either reducing demand or getting self-generation going. So we need to have a proper talk with the regulator and the DMRE about liberalizing that, that environment. Um, and unfortunately, there was a court case uh, which came out against the municipality that was uh, seeking to procure immediately, uh, not necessarily on the merits of the case, but Cape Town wanted to start procuring without a deviation notice from the DMRE. But the court has said that they first need to try and engage in terms of cooperative governance and what the constitution says around that with the DMRE to get some settlement. So hopefully that settlement will come soon because a number of municipalities are chomping at the bit to add their own capacity and energy to the system, but seriously need to liberalize the regulations around self-generations for the corporates. I think a lot more can be done. There's so much pent up supply there that can come on without any risk to the f uh, blowing the fiscus. So that needs to really happen soon because both the emergency procurement program and the RP, that, that capacity and energy is only gonna start coming in from 2022, 2023 at the earliest. So we need to do other things in the, in the, sh in the short term to start uh, lowering the risk of load shedding, which really is going to knock growth at a time when we need to start recovering. So it would be a dereliction of duty if we don't see that bid documentation post haste, and it would be a dereliction of duty if we don't see a liberalization of the self-generation market really, really soon. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.